<laughs> okay, so Michelle Park, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited now, to be here. I feel like this is a conversation that I envisaged us having over at least one bottle of wine at some point during this year, but uh, events have transpired against that. So I thought, why not have it as a podcast so that everybody can listen? I love it. And I'm so glad you said at least one bottle because I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking two, two might be good. One for you, one for me. I'm a red girl. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, I prefer red. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to jump straight into it with two big questions that I want you to answer like in your own time. The first is how did you find your passion for fitness? And the second is how did you end up as format expert for Pio? Oh gosh. Okay. So this is a funny story. Um, I didn't like fitness at the beginning, hated it. I, I, I did, I was a tap dancer in school though. So I, mm -hmm. I think there's fitness in tap dancing. Um, so I didn't do any sports. I was a tap dancer in, in um, middle school and then high school out here, which is you know like 14 to 17, that really fun, awkward age. So <laughs> I did that at that time and really enjoyed it, but I didn't like fitness. I didn't like running, I didn't like lifting. I wasn't introduced to any of that. Uh, the first introduction to some sort of fitness was when my mother took me to a place called Venus de Milo. It sounds a lot more That's exciting okay. than it really is. No, don't be thinking anything fancy. It was one <laughs> I'm of those- I'm seeing um, marble statues. I know, like me Greek too, goddess. I got a visual. <laughs> No, none of that. Uh, I was a little, I was, I was probably about 30 pounds heavy when I was about 13. So my mom took me to this place called Venus de Milo and, and you're on this eating, you had this eating um, style that you had to do and don't even make me tell you what it was because it was not a great thing. And, and uh, not, nothing we would call like high carb, low fat or any of that kind of fun stuff now. But, and you were, you did this little training circuit where you lift a little bit of weights and then you did a little cardio. And then you had this really fun tool where you sat on this kind of rolling wood thing. I can't, if you ever went to Venus de Milo, anybody in the U S you will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you put your body over this thing, it was supposed to roll away the fat. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. In my head, mom. I've got this vision of, I think it's the movie, the woman where they're all in the gymnasium and they have those rubber bands that they go around their waist and the machine just kind of goes. Oh <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty much like that. Except that these were wo like wooden balls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a picture and I'm going to have to send it to you. Yeah. We'll put um, those in the so show that's, <laughs> Yes, please. So that was, how I was introduced to fitness, not the best. And then I needed a job, but then I was like 17 and a half. And I thought, oh, I'm going to start, uh, I need a job. I want to start working. Why not? Because I don't like fitness. Why not start working at this holiday health spa that's right down the street? Perfect. So I went to get a job at a holiday health spa thinking they would put me at the front desk and no, they trained me to be a uh, floor uh, trainer, which was teaching group exercise classes on um, cement with carpet over it, four classes, four half an hour classes a day in an eight hour period. It was, I didn't like it at first, what but I felt- What type of classes was this? Oh, high impact. Why well, oh, we're back in the day impact. of jazz Oh yeah, oh years. yes. <laughs> how high can you kick? How much can you pound your body into the floor? How much can you do? Yeah, I and I also had too. to, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> and I also got to look around the floor and kind of monitor the floor. So I was a pseudo personal trainer and fitness instructor um, at 18 probably. So. But I fell in love. I absolutely. So you know, been doing it for a couple of years. <laughs> oh well, I know that you can't see me right now, but if you did, you'd say I can't believe she's fifty-three. Yes. Yeah, so I've been doing it for thirty-six years. Is my math correct? For quite a while, and I love. Uh, I don't specialize every in math. Five, six, seven, eight. That's the math that I know. <laughs> Perfect. All that we need. So yes, you've been in the exactly. business for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And you've seen and, a lot and, uh, of changes in those times. I bet. 100%. And I've been in, it's funny because I've been a fitness instructor. I have my own personal training company for a while. You know, I worked for 24 hour fitness. I was in management there. I worked for holiday health. I was in management there. And so, yeah, I, I feel like I've, I feel like I got around in fitness if that is an appropriate thing to say in a good way, in a very good <laughs> I way. Think I've it got is. Around I think fitness, it is. We know what you mean. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> and then, so I'll tell you a story how I led to, how I became the foreman expert. Um, so when I worked at 24 Hour Fitness, I was mm -hmm. in management. So I, I managed about 24 group exercise club. Never the sales, just always the group exercise. So quite a transition for, for a girl who was rolling, rolling excess fat on a wood machine um, <laughs> and fell in love with fitness, um, teaching on cement. And then I was managing about 24 clubs for 24 Hour mm -hmm. Fitness. And that I loved that job. Absolutely loved it because I love, you know, one of the most important things to me is community. So I loved mm -hmm. creating community. And when I had that job, I met Shalene Johnson. Okay. So Shalene Johnson, 
is um, was the owner of Powder Blue Productions. Not at that time. At that time, she hadn't developed like her um, signature programs, Turbo Kick and Pio and Hip Hop. Oh, okay, Marshall. so you mentioned yeah. pre Powder Blue when she was oh, yeah. instructing and sort of freestyling. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, freestyling. That's what we used to That's call it. That's still a thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure uh-huh. it's still a thing. Uh, it is. It is. I think I just taught it like an hour ago. Freestyle yeah, an hour ago. But um, yeah, so I met her. We had we we lived probably about ten miles away from each other. So they hired us both on as managers, and we both had about twenty to twenty four clubs. And so we had a lot of uh, the same people in our area. So and we lived so close that they kind of divided up California. Um, east and west not north and south east and west so we probably had clubs about 10 miles away from each other was but somebody went all the way to west hollywood and somebody went to san diego and and those are like three hours apart it was it was a really fun time she transitioned and um, built her own company powder blue productions with Mm -hmm. those other formats i was saying pio and turbo and all-star presenter camp hip-hop hustle and i was still working for 24 and she called me one day in the 90s mid mid to late uh, 90s I'm not good with dates. <laughs> You're not great with math. <laughs> it's a summer, summer time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Some time ago. Let's okay, see. That was my first, yeah, my first baby. So that was uh, tw- Brandy's 24. So that was 24 years ago. So you do okay, the math. Yeah, so we're mid, we're mid- calculate- 90s. Just yeah, to give yeah. people so a right around that visual time. so that they can picture the, the fashion that was being rocked at the time. Oh, dear. Leg warmers, mm-hmm. G-strings Roll socks. on the outside. Oh, Roll yeah. socks, yes. White <laughs> shoes. Whoever wore, would wear black shoes. Now I, I'll only wear black shoes, but then it was like white, <laughs> white shoes, leg warmers, roll the socks down. Yeah, super low cut in the back. I'm getting a visual. Yes, exactly. Getting, that is the visual that I was visual. I'm, <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm gonna move on yep, from yeah, that yeah, yeah. visual. <laughs> So I, she went and did her, made her own company Mm -hmm. and left 24 and I was still managing with 24. I was doing a lot of program developing with 24, which I absolutely loved. And, um, we used to have these things called expeditions where we uh, trained instructors in 24 fitness branded format. So I was very Mm -hmm. involved in that. And she called me up and she said, um, I need an area promotion director for this area. And, and this area would be orange County, California. And, um, they don't have, they didn't have anybody in this area. And I said, well, I'm still working for 24 mm-hmm. and, and, um, but 24 had stopped doing their program design. So I was ready to move on to something. And I said, yep. I never say no to Shaleen because she never has led me wrong. So I'm like, sure. I always I jump. A lot when of people it comes say to her. that actually. <laughs> yes. Yes. I always jump. So I said, sure. Yep. Yeah. So she took me on and I was air promotion director for orange County, um, presented a, a lot of her formats, turbo kick and, and Pio hip hop hustle only one time because my quality of movement doesn't go into that genre. <laughs> I don't transition into that genre. Respect I can for, knowing, for knowing your sweet well, spot and knowing your boundaries. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I did that for um, quite a while, absolutely loved it. And then she uh, was developing this program in Pio. And, and Pio was, so Turbo Kick was the, the phenomenon. Like mm-hmm. everybody heard of Turbo Kick, everybody loved Turbo Kick. It was, you know, it had been an infomercial. It just was, uh, it was the top and doing really well in every club. The community was crazy. Like it, it, fanat- the turbo fanatics, they used to call them. Yep. And she had another program called Pio. She developed them at the same time, but Pio didn't get the same attention. Mm-hmm. And, and we talked about this a bunch of times, like Pio didn't get the same attention because it was very different. It was kind of like Turbo Kick was branded. Here's your choreography. Here's your music. Here's everything, right? Pio, Pio was here is your choreography. Here's your music. Fly, be free. Make your make your own choreography. It was like it, we didn't give you any guidelines for it, so it wasn't thriving. And I I, I truly believe it wasn't thriving because there was no community behind it. There was no um, uh, sense of oh she's doing the same. Like somebody in Florida couldn't take a, a Pio number five and go to California and and get the same ex, same kind of experience. So it was right. all different all over the place and and it was very 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 yoga at the time. Right. Very, yeah. very yoga. Nothing wrong with yoga. I absolutely love yoga, but it was very yoga. And it was hard to make that transition into that um, genre because um, at that time there wasn't a lot of people doing that. And so it was kind of frowned upon. So she said that we used to call Pio um, every lesson. They were called rounds. Yep. So at Pio lesson or round number 18, we were sitting in the back of a 24 fitness in Laguna 
hills. <clears throat> this is this is a big game changer for me. Mm -hmm. So this changed the the direction probably of my career. So we were sitting in the back of the studio and, and there was instructor Lauren teaching. She was teaching Pio and she was teaching Pio less than 18. And and it was good. Okay, it was good. But at that time, there were a lot of great cooks in this kitchen, right? Like a lot of great, really creative cooks um, in this kitchen. And it just kind of had so much going on that it that it had too much going on. Mm -hmm. So she said, is this how you teach Pio? And I'm like, okay, Shalene's sitting in the back of the classroom. And she's asking me like, is this how you teach Pio? Should I lie to her? I'm like, no, <laughs> no. And I'm looking the other way. No. She says, oh, mm -hmm. and she's thinking because she's a thinker. <laughs> like she sits and thinks and, and before she speaks. And she says, we need to do something with this. We need to kind of fix it. And I'm just you nodding my head. And she said, and let me preface this by saying I had a lot going on at the time. Mm -hmm. I was still doing stuff for 24 hour fitness and, you know, I had just had a baby, like, and I, I just, there was a lot going on in my life. Yeah. And she said, you should do this. And I said, okay, <laughs> like not even a, a split <laughs> right. second, another thing, another <laughs> jump. And that was the best decision that I have ever made in my opinion. And it just set the, the path of my career, which I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed and, and I'm enjoying now. But so I was a, for, I was a Pio uh, format expert, we would call it something different when I worked for her, but a pile format expert for her for powder blue mm -hmm. productions. And then she, and that was at round or lesson round 18. And so for at anyone lesson, listening that's ahead. not a powder blue person who hasn't familiar with the term format expert, can you just explain what that means in the, in, in the essence of what you were doing with relation to Pio? Absolutely. So in Pio, I was choosing the music, mm -hmm. I was creating the choreography and putting everything together from A to Z. Right. Yeah. So everything basically together. creating so the, creating the entire workout and the music and the moves and putting it all together. And then, and then would, and then Shaleen would have a, uh, pro would be involved in the sign off process. A hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent. And there was majority of the time we worked together. Like that yeah. is one of my favorite things to do, to do like go over our house and, and create and put on the song and just move to the music. And we'd be like, Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. We write all the moves down. And then mm -hmm. we would test out the choreography with um, multiple groups of people across the country and put it out in at that time, <laughs> DVD form. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For instructors. Yeah. At that time, DVD form. So yeah, that was, what I did for her at lesson 18, lesson 23, she sold her company, the powder blue productions, the instructor development company that owned turbo kick hip hop hustle and, and Pio mm -hmm. to beach body live. Right. Yeah. So I it was part of the package. <laughs> it was like it. A package <laughs> so that's when you um, transitioned so across I, to beach body live as format. Yes. For Pio. Yes, exactly. And that was round 23. Mm -hmm. And, and when we, when we, when Beachbody went goodbye, we, yep. uh, we were on 67. Okay. Wow. So that's, a, that's, 67. A, so I, wow. So your time yeah. as format expert papaya was, was kind of weighted towards the Beachbody live end. In, yes. In terms of number yeah. of releases that you were managing. Yes. A hundred percent. And, and we morphed and changed that program from, um, a, a good program to a great program by the end. So that I'm really proud of that. But we, we did as a village, you know, it takes a team, it takes a team of great yeah, people. Yeah, which I was, I was we part did. of for a for Yes, a you were a hundred percent. I do yep. have to say that of all of the Beachbody Live programs, I think that Pyo was the, the best from my perspective in that it just filled a niche in the market that no other format was filling. Um, yes, the, I agree. The mixture yeah. of, you know, Pilates and yoga, yes, other formats have it, but it, they don't have the strength element and the cardio element that Pio had. And then bringing it together with the musicality, allowing instructors to teach it slow, medium or fast, depending on what was in front of them. It really was something that I don't think any other format replicated, which is why it was so sad when the events of sort of the end of last year happened. So that probably brings us to a good time to jump forward. So you are a format expert for Pio. You're creating the workouts. And then in November of 2019, Beachbody Live suddenly announces that it's going to be shutting down. So tell me about that experience. Rude. Rude. <laughs> tell tell me about they? the experience from your perspective. Um, so I haven't really, I, I haven't really discussed this, which is really kind of funny because I, I've never asked, been asked like what, what happened that day or, or how did, how did this all transpire? So what I, and there's nothing, there's no secrets or anything, mm -hmm. but it was quite a shock. It was a shock to 
everybody. Now, I'm sure that behind the scenes, some people probably knew, um, the people that had to know, but um, the format experts for all of Beachbody Live formats did not know. Mm -hmm. So I was up in San Francisco with my daughter. I had just, um, in the week before, I had just got back with a really fun girls trip to New York with Shalene and a bunch of the girls and, and everything was great. And we were talking about what, you know, the, what the future of, and then right. um, yeah. I was in San Francisco with my daughter and I started to hear, like, I had a phone call from a friend and she's like, did you hear? And I'm like, did I hear what? <laughs> did I hear what? Now, now what? And then she told me, she said she heard a rumor that Beach by Live was, um, going away. And I'm like, there's no way there's no, you know, it's not possible. There's no way it's thriving. Like there, we have about 16,000 instructors, mm -hmm. you know, the formats are doing well, you know, Pio was at that time and actually give a, given a, give and take a few months here and there when new formats came out, but it was the number one format. Yep. I thought, how yep. could they do, how could they do that? It seemed kind of strange to me, but nothing would surprise me. So mm -hmm. that was on a Sunday on a, um, on a Monday, I, got an email that said, you know, we need to set up a call. And I'm like, okay, well, now I know. Now I've already right. known. Now I've heard from two sources as a rumor and one source as a, a, a definite. I'm like, okay, I know. So I was the last, I, we were the number one format. I was the last format expert uh, to be told, which is kind of ironic to me. And that was on a Monday and the instructors were told on a Tuesday. And I had a phone call with, um, HR, they were very, very nice. I think mm -hmm. they were worried. <laughs> you know, you always, those calls are hard. I'm sure they're hard yeah. for, for both sides, right? Yeah. Because, and I knew what was coming. So I was yeah. already prepared. Um, I think probably there were some tears on the others from the, some of the other format experts, which, yeah. you know, it's, it's their brand. It's the, what they've been passionate about for years. And I completely sure. understand that. But I was ready. So no tears on my end. Uh, and again, I was in San Francisco having sourdough bread and poss possibly a glass of wine. And I let them know that. And I said, <laughs> don't worry. I get it. I understand. And I'm really good at handling that kind of stuff in the mm -hmm. moment. So, and I think they, honestly, I really think they were very nervous because of some of the conversations might not have gone so you know, right. so pleasant before, but and you it were was very good, connected was, with your group of instructors, your community of instructors, you know, 10,000 instructors that you're in communication with every day, mm -hmm. um, like yep. multiple times per day in the Pio community on Facebook. Yes, yes, 100%. And, and I couldn't say anything, right. so I couldn't say anything <clears throat> at the time. And so I was told on Monday, um, I did tell one person, very, very good friend of mine, very involved in the process, so mm -hmm. I let her know. And then um, they, the instructors got an email the next day. And then it was, you know, horrible. And we have a, we have a Pio Live Facebook group, tons of instructors, very, very active. Mm -hmm. I'm very active in that group, uh, yep. you know, going there once a week. We talk about the format. Um, for me, what I had said earlier, for me, it's a lot about community. So yep. um, I, I, my first instinct was to reach out to them and tell them, but I, I couldn't do that. Like it, it just wasn't, yeah. first of all, it wasn't my place. Um, I didn't want to deliver that news, but I knew it was my place to make sure they got through. Like right. it, that was, that was my place. Once, once uh -huh. they better chat with them as well. Yes, a hundred percent. So um, Beachbody Live asked very politely mm -hmm. uh, because if I would shut down that page for a couple of days, yeah. um, just, just to uh, calm everybody's nerves because they yeah, knew everybody yeah, yeah, would blow yeah. up. And uh, so they closed it down for two days and then we came back on and I did a live and yeah, uh, not, not the five. worst idea uh, when it comes to social media, because a lot of people 100%. Have, like, have immediate knee jerk reactions that they may later come to wish they hadn't. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I probably, on. yeah. And I probably would have been the exact same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do this. It's not going to shut down, blah, blah, blah. But you know, it really, really was the best thing. And then when I came back on and I was out of town, then when I came back on <clears> and we did a live and, and uh, you know, you can't, you, you can't see it because it's a Facebook live, but I'm pretty right. sure majority of the people on the other side of that live were in tears because it's a format that's very um, community oriented, yep. very passionate, um, not fanatical, but yep. very, very passionate, you know, very positive. And so they were, they were pretty devastated. This is a story that, and I want to get more into sort of the process of saying goodbye to Pio as well. But I think that what's really interesting about having this conversation now is that it's going to resonate with so many people, even if they weren't Pio instructors, because so many, well, actually everybody, but obviously this is a uh, podcast that's, um, that's especially for group fitness instructors. And so many instructors 
Pio or otherwise are dealing with loss, loss of uh, classes, closures of clubs, losses of connection to their community. And when something you do brings you so much joy and you pour so much of your heart into it, having it suddenly taken away from you, like you did with Pio or like a lot of instructors have had with gym closures and class closures over COVID, uh, it's, it's like losing someone. It's not dissimilar to that kind of process of grief. So the announcement gets made and you've done the live on Facebook and I, and how, but it continued for another two months and there was another release. Uh, is that correct? Correct. Yes. It, um, they made the announcement. Yep. Then we had um, another release mm -hmm. and then um, actually the month after that, we had a bonus block release and, um, and then it closed and then it was kind of like a silent month and then it closed down at the end of March. Right. And so tell yeah. me about your emotions during that period, like we, we, while you were kind of still actively involved with it, but saying goodbye, how was that to live through? It's funny that you said grief. Um, and I honestly, I don't want to get emotional, but I, I honestly probably wouldn't have realized that that was it mm -hmm. until pro probably about the last month. Um, right. And just because of changes that I'm going through, but I'll tell you the exact stages because I, I thought about that. I thought, well, did I really just transition from boom, being super sad to being okay, optimistic for the mm -hmm. future? Absolutely not. There was different stages. So I, at first it was disbelief. A hundred percent denial. That's not classic happen. first stage. Hundred, yep. Hundred, hundred percent denial. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, I'm fine. That's it. I'm going to save the day. Or I'm bargaining. Or some, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. I don't know any of the stages, so I'm just yeah, yeah. Them out. <laughs> I, don't, I should I'm have looked at them before. I don't know them either, but I feel like you're going to go through them for us. So okay. I'll leave okay. it to you. And then I thought, okay, if I can't save the day, somebody is going to ride in on a white horse and save the day. Like somebody's mm -hmm. going to buy it. Somebody's going to come and revive it. Carl's going to change his mind. Something's yep. going to happen. So that yep. was my next step. And I was like crossing my fingers and holding my breath. And then, um, I was angry because yep. nobody was, and maybe that should have been the first one, but then, <laughs> but nobody was, you know, nobody was saving the day. Nobody was saying anything. Everybody was like, okay, well, it, it is going away. And I, I kept thinking to myself, and again, this is partly denial too, right? Mm -hmm. how, how can this big, huge group of people that's been teaching these formats forever that I'm pretty sure is profitable. I don't know. I'm not in the corporate side of it. I don't understand. Yeah, sure, there's tons behind the scenes, yeah, but yeah, yeah. how could that go away, right? How could they let that how go? So they, there was an anchor. Yeah, how can a class that's so popular that has you know, 10,000 instructors in a, in a group talking about it constantly suddenly evaporate? Yeah, it was crazy to me. And I, and I, I will never understand that, nor do I, uh, you know, at first I wanted to know, wanted to know the answer, wanted to know the truth. And now I'm like, well, it is what it is. And, and they were not going to change it. So, and then, and then after that, so like this anger and saving the day and denial. And, and mm -hmm. then I had to get this reality check. Like, okay, well, <laughs> um, this, it's not coming back. Uh, I want to save and, and help this community. These people need new choreography they need music right. they need a place they need you know a stage they need to keep going they want to keep going yeah um now what do i do so then i went into planning mode Got and it. and not not even survival mode but planning mode and and mentoring mode because that's what i love to do like i i love to serve so serving mode was what i was going into next yeah so tell me a bit about that what do, what was the next step um so i it's funny because there. I had this grand plan, right? Mm -hmm. I had this plan. I, I knew exactly what I was going to do. Okay. Yep. Well, if they're not going to create and do anything more yep. with Pio, like I can do something. Yep. And, you know, I kind of went, I went through the right processes. I made sure that um, I connected with the people that I needed to connect with um, at the time. And I said, can I do this? Is this, what, you know, I want to do this. I knew that I didn't want to do um, Pio live just like it is because out of respect for the creator, mm -hmm. like I don't want to do that. That's not my place. Yep. But I knew that I loved moving to music. I knew that I loved uh, the type of movement that we did, um, the experience that we created. So I knew I want to do something along the same lines. And, and I've been creating since I worked for Holiday Health Spa. So right. just a couple, yep. a couple of years. So it's in my blood. Like, <laughs> I, you know, it's in my blood. Like you, like it's in our blood. That's yep. what we do. 100%. Yes, you, you completely understand. You wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, okay, grab a sticky, write that little um, choreography down. Okay, put it mm -hmm. back. Okay, go back to bed. And then you're, you know, in the morning you wake up and you've got choreography. So like, that's what I was known to do. And that's what I could do. And that's what I'm passionate about. So I thought I'm going to put it 
all together. I'm yep. ready to launch. I'm going to call it this. I'm going to do this. I'm ready to launch. The uh, Beachbody Live is closing March 31st. I am launching April 1st. And I'm tell ready, me what happened then. <laughs> ready to go. Boom. <laughs> There's this little thing called COVID. Right. <laughs> a little thing called COVID that happened. And I'll be a hundred percent honest. I was, it, it, it has been an actual blessing. And okay. I know people are gonna be like, wait, it's you were ready to go and it's mm -hmm. you got stopped and COVID stopped you. Like it's a blessing. But I was very close to the brand. Right. Super close to the brand. I've been living, eating, and breathing that brand for seven years. Like seven of my mature years, of my smart years, you know? Yeah, when, when you I, knew what I, you I were doing. Of, yeah, exactly. So I had been living, eating, breathing that brand. And if I would have created something, if they would have gone away on March 31st, which they did, and I created something to launch on April 1st, it would have been too Pio-esque. Right. And as much as I absolutely love Pio and it has this huge place in my heart. I couldn't do that disservice to the instructors. I couldn't do the service to the creator. I couldn't do that. I just had to realize that I am, I am more than the brand. And I think that we don't, we as instructors, like we teach these certain brands and we work for these certain companies and we just mm -hmm. become branded ourselves. So your, your identity becomes subsumed within the format that you're teaching rather than sort of in and of yourself. 100%. I mean, I had taught multiple formats since I was 18 years old and probably for the last four years was only teaching Pio. I mean, I did other stuff. I ran, I lifted, like I just, but teaching, I was only teaching Pio. So it was very um, hard for me to take myself out of that brand. And I needed to. I mean, people, people knew me as the format expert. Yeah, I was branded in their mind as the Pio go-to mm -hmm. person. Um, but I had to give myself space <laughs> to, to take myself out of that place because, and, and that was part of the grieving process too. That was a little challenging. So you, you had this, uh, this thing that you loved <clears throat> and that you were fully engaged with taken away from you. And then you kind of, sounds like you dealt with that. You began to make a plan for um, an alternative that you thought was going to be, you know, great and fulfill you. And then you had that taken away from you again. What was the emotional reaction when COVID happened right on the cusp of you launching the new thing? Again, I was angry. I was saving. Okay, <laughs> let's go back through that process again, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back shall to we? The beginning. Because, <laughs> yes, let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't let, but I knew this time I knew and I was smarter this time mm -hmm. because I had been through that loss once, um, a big, a bigger loss. And now in my mind, this is either a continuation from that bigger loss or a little bit smaller loss. And I had learned from the last time, um, COVID came and I could have, I could have probably launched. I really could have launched still. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it would have been, it's a, I'm glad I didn't. And people are probably going to be like, why, why are you, you know, that you didn't launch a product that you love, but I'm glad I didn't because here's the deal. So many instructors were out of jobs. They yeah. didn't have any money coming in. They, how can they afford to do what I wanted to do and what I was going to give them? So it, it gave me a chance to kind of regroup, refocus, rebuild. And um, it, it, it took that pressure off of me to say, here's your product. Here's your, your thing. Okay, now you're paying for this service, but you don't have any money because you're not teaching right. in the gym. So I, I felt a little guilt there. Now I don't. Now I know. Now I have a feeling. Now I know exactly what I'm going to do because this, we've got this great ah, perfect. thing going on. But, but yeah. it's, it, as you say the story, I'm just thinking of so many parallels with instructors who were teaching classes that they loved, feeling really secure in their careers and had that taken away and then have had to sort of forage ahead and find a new way. And then... And then a lot of people are, um, depending on where they are around the world, at risk of going into further lockdowns, right? So that second kind of having the rug swept from under you is sort of sitting on the precipice for so many instructors out there. So tell me, um, what have you applied, what have you taken from those lessons to bring forward into what you're doing next? Um, and it's funny you say that, that, that they're, they're waiting for the kind of the rug to be pulled out again, because um, out here, well, I'm in Southern California mm -hmm. and in California, we were, you know, we went on lockdown, yeah. uh, everything was closed, gyms were closed, everything was closed. And then we, 
opened. <laughs> we opened for a total of group exercise in one of the facilities I teach opened for a total of 10 days. And right. I taught two classes. <laughs> and then the governor came in and he said, boom, all gyms are closed right. again. Um, and then even when I went back to teach, it was masks and 15 people in a classroom. And, and right. we were, so it's just we not the same very... experience, right? Like no, it's not, it's no, not that it's... same thing that was bringing you the joy that it was before. It's different. Yes, it is very it, it was very different and it was joyful, mm -hmm. but it was just a different sort of joy. And you have 15 people in the room and you feel bad because you know, there's, you know, four or five, 20, 30, whatever, more people that wanted to come and couldn't come. Yeah. And, and I was lucky enough to have already had, uh, you know, kind of a, a hybrid situation going on, but it, it was very challenging when that gym closed up again. And then now we are back in lockdown again and we, our gyms are closed. So we're right. closed again. We have some gyms that are doing fitness outside and that's brilliant. I think that's mm -hmm. very creative. It's perfect. But um, you know, we're in Southern California, it's going to get kind of hot pretty soon. So there, there, there are other challenges for that thing too. It was, um, it was hard for me when uh, the gyms opened, this is gonna sound weird, but it was hard for me when the gyms opened back up because I had been enjoying, <laughs> it's hard as a fitness instructor to say this because you know You're that you to know that. Give, you, give yourself you, permission. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that the in-person experience is one of the best mm -hmm. non-negotiable experiences ever. Touching, feeling, look, not feeling, that'd be weird. Hello, <laughs> hello, I'm going to feel you in my class today. Show these rules against Touching. <laughs> Maybe, maybe where you are, but in California, we're pretty, no, okay. Um, you know, eye contact, walking, high-fiving people, like all that kind of stuff, like that experience is a non-negotiable. That's a plus, but we've been teaching virtual for a while. I'm really like, we have created this amazing virtual experience, which I think every instructor has the ability to do. Right. And so it was hard for me to go back to in-person because I've been going from teaching this large virtual class yep. to the smaller in-person class. So it was challenging for me there. Um, and then when we got shut down again, I was kind of, it was, I was a little happy because then I could go back to teaching virtual. And that's right. so weird because I never, never would have thought that I wanted to take that experience, the in-classroom experience and do it on camera. Um, now we've been doing it forever in Park Studios, but, but I yeah, never thought I wanna, that- I wanna touch yeah. on that. We'll let, finish off um, this part and then we'll, we'll touch on Park Studios because it's a really interesting yeah. story as well. Yeah, we, I was challenged to have all these local people. I thought, you know, how are they ever going to come to virtual? And, mm -hmm. and so I made, made the best of the situation that we have. And I think that that's what every fitness instructor has to really think about because we go through that mourning process, that grieving process of loss and can I, and should I, and would I, and what was really important to me during this COVID period, during all this shutdown yep. was to mentor and help those instructors. So I don't know if you and I even talked about it, but I came up with a course for them. We, mm -hmm. I did a lot of online, I did a, a lot of um, online Zooms, free yep. online Zooms, giving them tons of information, trying to set them up right. Because again, that's what I love to do, like mentoring yep. that community Absolutely. and trying to get them to the place where they need to go. But um, we came up with a course, let's get virtual. And we've taken a lot of people through how to do that because they, I just think that as fitness instructor, we have to be able, we have to be able to pivot. I we have to be able could to pivot not right now. agree with mm -hmm. you more. And like one of the things I've, I'm, I've seen is that there are some people who've jumped on virtual and we're going to come back to virtual because this is again with park studios and are running with it. But there are a lot of other instructors who I think are in that denial stage, in the anger stage, yes. in the bargaining stage, yes. and they're looking forward to their classes coming back. And I think all of us really want that to happen. But if, okay. we're, if, we, if we get honest with ourselves just for a second, like we're in summer now, we're going into winter, it's unlikely that sort of things are going to get easier. And regardless of how you feel about the virus, just looking at the reality of, you know, people have stopped going to the gym, people are working from home, like the whole um, schedule has changed and being able to at least understand and appreciate the power of virtual is something that every group fitness instructor needs to do. I, I agree a hundred percent and, and we need to embrace it. And it's scary to embrace. It's funny that our fitness instructors who thrive, these introverts, right. Who, who mm. thrive on this stage and become extroverts are, are nervous to go in front of a camera with people on the other side of the lens. It, 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 it's funny. We, we, we're nervous. We're scared to do that. And, um, you know, you and I come from background of being on camera, so it's easier for us. I was still I, scared when I did my first live stream yeah. classes, though. <laughs> and, and all the technology, it's like, ah, I don't know if the camera's going to work, and is my microphone working, and I'm stressed out, and I have to be there for the people in the class. Like, it is not simple. It's not easy. 
No, no, it's not. I started teaching on Facebook Live and I'm like loving it. Woo woo. And then I'm like, I have to make the transition to Zoom because I want to see those people face to face. Mm. I really want to have that experience. And um, I have a really good friend. Her name is Lindsay Coleman. And she, she, set my, she set me up. So that's, we had a great experience. And then this morning, remember, I th- taught at the class this morning, no microphone. I'm oh, like, fantastic. what happened? Every, yeah. And so there's always those kind of things. But yeah. I think the more we're able to kind of go with the flow and just say, okay, well, you know, stuff happens yeah. and we have to be able to kind of rise out of that um, because it's not all about us. It's, it's about us fulfilling and, and making sure that we're fulfilled for sure. But it's also about those people on the other side of the camera that really need us right now. And I don't Absolutely. think we understand more, how much. More so. now than ever. I agree. hundred percent. So let's talk for a minute about Park Studios, because when I think of Park Studios, I think of you as being a real kind of forerunner and a bit of a trailblazer in the term of uh, virtual teaching, because I think that you were probably the first person I saw doing Facebook Live teaching, period. Now, um, tell me a bit about that. Like, what got you into doing that so much before the curve? It's, you know, it's so funny. I wondered, I thought to myself, how, it seems like it's, it's just such an everyday thing now. I want, how did right, we ever but first start? it wasn't start? when you started doing it. The first time no. I saw you do it, I was like, oh, this is new. What's she doing? What's she doing? <laughs> What's going on? So Beachbody Live um, it gave permission right. to their instructors to teach virtually. Yeah. So they, they came out with this big thing, like you can teach virtually, you know, go for it, whatever you need to do. And which Facebook I think every format or, should do it. Like oh, it, it should just be like a thing. <laughs> yeah. It, a lot it really, of well, especially now. It, yeah. Especially now. So they, they were kind of a, above the curve on that one too. So yeah. I followed suit and I'm like, well, I don't want it. I've never wanted it to be just about me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I know a lot of talented, you know, people. Uh, I know a lot of talented master, master trainers. Yep. And, and so I thought, I'm going to put together a group of people and I'm going to, and I thought, what can I call it? Well, my last, my last name's Park. <laughs> Let's call it Park Studio, Studios. It's there club, you go. Club, club, there we go. I feel so like there was a large brainstorm, what... <laughs> uh, lots of post-it notes there. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably lots of post-it notes. That's how I roll. But um, so that's how we came up with it. And I reached out to the instructor. I said, listen, it, can you trust me? This is what I want to do. Um, and I'll tell you what, we had... We had probably 300 uh, people sign up like right right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And I was very excited for that. Majority of them were instructors. Right. And I think Pio the majority community. of them were instructors. Yep. Yeah. Pio community. And, and they wanted to come and do more Pio, but they also wanted to come and be voyeurs. Right. <laughs> they wanted to yeah. kind of see what the other master trainers were doing, how they were teaching. And it honestly really was a great teaching tool for newer instructors because they right. could come in and see how it's okay to teach this pre-formatted class mm-hmm. your way. Yeah. So um, it gave them permission to do that. And and that was awesome. We, we offered Pio, mostly Pio at the very beginning with some mm-hmm. Turbo Kick. And over the years, because it's been um, going on for three years. Over yeah, the years, so three years. Three years. I mean, that's like well Wow, ahead. yeah. <laughs> wow, it's so crazy. And now we have, you know, we brought in like P90X, but um, we'd have like Hit Strength. We have Amy's in there. Amy, ah, yeah. trainers is in there. And she's teaching, yeah, she's teaching Shift. And, yeah, and Holly's excellent. teaching Lift I love that. <laughs> and Flow. Yeah, we love it. One of our favorite classes. And um, lots of Pio and, and some people doing bar. And so it's really expanded. Mm-hmm. I, um, and I, and my main thing with that, with getting that community together yep. uh, was taking care of my, I, I don't even call them staff, the instructors. Yep. They're my partners. Like they're my partners in this studio. So it was really important for me to treat them really well, uh, make sure they were paid and compensated really well, um, make sure that they could kind of pick their times. I don't have a set time every month i i give them the schedule they come in and pick their times so i mean really like, well, th- these are the great things about virtual that instructors that are still kind of holding out uh needing to appreciate right like you can structure yes. it around what you're doing you're not going to be beholden to the gym's timetable no mm-mm. you get to choose your format you get to mm-hmm. choose your time um depending on the platform you're on you can choose yep. your music you know that's a big beast but yep. you know there's a lot <laughs> that, of things that's definitely a whole nother <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Don't walk away. But there's tons of stuff that you can do and so much flexibility. And it was really important for me to give my partners in, yep. in Park Studios this flexibility. And um, and so we we did that and we ha- we ha- went from we probably went from like 250 to 350 and now we're back like around uh, 300 members and it's very 
So I like to think of Park Studios as a boutique, boutique like gym. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's very, it's very community oriented. And we do Facebook, we have a private Facebook group, we do Facebook lives, and we do Zooms. Mm -hmm. And then all of the um, classes are housed on a platform. So they're all housed on a portal, right. a member yep. portal. <clears throat> Yeah. And we've been doing, we didn't house all that stuff, by the way, we were doing everything Facebook live, Facebook live for yeah. the longest time. Right. Um, and so and, for, yeah. for an instructor that's just starting off, that's real an important thing to realize, right? Like your, your yes. park studios is where it is because you've learned and you've gone along the way, but you kicked that off with 300 members on Facebook live with no investment yes. and just you no investment. And a camera delivering it to, to Facebook. Yep. Me, a camera, yeah. nothing else, <laughs> a boom box, boom, go. And majority of the instructors in there were doing the exact same thing. Now we had right. a couple of instructors who were like tech savvy yeah. and they had this whole setup and everything. And, and, and we were all jealous, right? But, <laughs> and again, that was a long time ago and, and we have made tons of mistakes, right. but I have learned from those mistakes. And the great thing is about, about it is I made the mistakes so I can help people you know, right. not make the mistakes or at least get through them when they do make them because it's probably inevitable, but yeah, exactly. um, yeah. And it's okay. Is, like, it's okay. It's, that's, I mean, I think that is excellent to hear from someone who was obviously, you know, at the top of the industry and in front of the camera all the time to know that like at the start you made mistakes that you were doing it in the low tech way and that you've kind <laughs> <Yes>. of muddled <laughs> your way through to the point where you are now. That's, I would yes. say, very reassuring to people who are still scared to take that step. You know, you know, another thing that's really important probably for them to know is, um, so, you know, I had a big following in class, right? Like a lot of people came to class <laughs> and, and got this great, huge, you know, big, huge Pio Live page. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, it's just going to be, we could, this could be huge. And I'm going to do Facebook Live and, and everybody is going to want to come. Like, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of the other people that were doing it thought the same thing. Yep. But guess what? It's not, it, it, it me yep. or another instructor, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I might have five people on class. Right. And it's not about me. It's not about my quality of work. It's not about me as an instructor. It's just That's everybody, such uh, a good point. right? so important to realize because people think oh gosh if i don't have five people sign up for my class or if i don't have 10 people that want to join my facebook group i shouldn't do it that's not enough people yeah and, and i just don't i i think that that's a bit of pride that as yep. fitness instructors we kind of have to get over <laughs> well, and know, it will grow absolutely and i i know it like i remember when i turn up to a class and there'd be a new class on the timetable and be two or three people there yes would, yeah, for yeah. the 10 minutes before i'm like i don't want to do this i don't want to do this <laughs> Yeah. And then I start teaching and my teacher brain would flick on and I would have a great time and we'd just have a little kind of mini party of our own. Yes, 100%, 100%. And I, and I think that that is, that's hard because, you know, instructors do have that, that ego sometimes, but I think that we need to throw that aside, like right. throw it aside. It shouldn't even be there anymore and just realize, you know, why we're really there, why we're really in front of the camera. And the fact that you're creating a video that someone can watch later. And so you kind of have to, yeah, you have yeah. to put that yes. pride and ego aside and understand that the medium that you're now teaching through allows a different experience. And so to roll with that and to not get too caught up in it. Yeah. And there's so many opportunities. I mean, Facebook live and zoom and housing all these. And I, and I have a really good um, friend who lives locally, who just is, does everything on zoom. And then she saves her recordings. I mean, it's a great opportunity for instructors. She saves her recordings and then she sells them all for $5. Here's a five dollar yeah. class. Sends them out to them. I mean, that's great too. I just think sometimes we're we're not quite sure how to think outside of the box. And I think right, right now in this time, right, we have to think outside of that box. Yeah, definitely. And if you don't, then you probably will, won't be able to continue being an instructor. <laughs> like oh, you have to be able, you have to be yeah. able to kind of pivot. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, yes. Sorry. What I was going to ask you is. Um, what so this is that's the park studios side what is next for michelle in terms of the format expert michelle what have you got in the pipeline there well i am super close <laughs> i'm, <laughs> I'm super teasing it out close. i'm teasing it out <laughs> I know, I know. super close to um i love to create i mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love to create and having this covid time we'll call it um and this this chance to it, it's funny 
Beach by Live left. It was a, that was a huge brand for me. Mm -hmm. If that wouldn't have, if that wouldn't have happened, right? If mm -hmm. COVID wouldn't have happened, you think of all these things that like, yeah, if they wouldn't the have happened. Would I is. <laughs> right. I wouldn't. I couldn't. Wouldn't be in this place. But I'm in the place right now where I've realized um, that I'm not that brand, and mm -hmm. I have much more worth, and that I actually do remember how to create this stuff prior to. Yeah. So we're gonna. We have a. We have something coming out probably within the next month. It's kind of like okay. a one stop in shut instructor shop so i'm very 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 excited for that ah so we're close so no announcements yeah, just yeah. yet no no news just yet if anyone's super curious but there is stuff in the works maybe we'll have to yes. do a um a part two to this interview yes when, um, when it's let's ready let's do a follow-up because it, it's probably it's probably one week away from being um, announced and I will I will tell you first maybe we can just do an add-on we can do an add-on <laughs> yes exactly perfect <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but I'm excited because um, just like you like we that's how our brain works we mm -hmm. love to create we love to create and if I and if I'm not I feel it just makes me I don't know makes me a little anxious if I don't like that's and it's our gift it's a gift it really is a right. gift like I see everything you do with with shift. oh my gosh it's just it amazes <laughs> me every single time seriously and oh, as, well I, tell, I, I told you that's one of my favorite classes to take in park studios don't tell all the pile <laughs> <laughs> I won't well it should be our little secret whenever we'll tell you <laughs> quite quite <laughs> So what I heard a lot during this interview was your desire to really connect with community and to make sure that no matter what happened and what changes uh, hit you unexpectedly, having the resilience to still continue doing that. And I think that that's such a, um, an important message for instructors who maybe feel like they're floundering or don't quite know how to adapt to all the change that's going on in their life. So with the stuff that's happened to you since November last year um, with the closing down of Beachbody Live and then COVID and then um, the success you've had with Park Studios. If you could give an instructors listening to this one piece of advice based on your experience, what would that be? You know, it's, we've, we've touched on a couple of the keywords throughout mm -hmm. and I've kind of like peppered them in, yeah. but um, I'll tell you a couple things. I think that, uh, I used to be the person that told everybody to jump. And I still do believe that. I still do believe that you need to jump. But I, I want people to know that it's okay to, to tiptoe into that cold water first. It's, it's okay to get your feet wet. Now, yeah. I think that some people are scared because everybody else is doing it and they feel like I should be doing it. But it's okay to not want to do it as well. It's okay to be that student. It's mm. okay to go slow. It's okay to go at your own pace. But when you're ready, you need to make sure you know that it is time to pivot. Pivoting right. is huge. And we are a group fitness instructors. We do really well on our feet. So exactly. pivoting should come easy to us, right? <laughs> First time, we've been pivoting since right? those new repeaters we were doing in the 80s. <laughs> yes, 100%, 100%. So it, you have to learn how to rebuild because things have broken down. Mm -hmm. um, rebuilding is hard. And sometimes that takes a little mental clarity first, yep. um, really sitting down with yourself and figuring out if that's what you want to do. Uh, find a mentor so you can refocus. That's mm -hmm. really important. You're always welcome to reach out to me for any ideas. I know Will will help you with yep. anything. We'll you put need. all your social yep. details in the show notes so that people can reach I out. Love, I love doing that. I think that's extremely important. Um, and I want to tell you that just to not give up because I think a lot of fitness instructors, because they see what everybody else is doing, because they feel like they should have gone and done this three months ago, they think it's too late. And it's yeah, not too it's late not. to do what you love to do. It is not too late. Absolutely. Well, I think that is a perfect note to, to end that on. So awesome. thank you, Michelle, for being on the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I will look forward to our part two and also yes. the bottle of wine that we'll drink whenever we manage to see each other in person again. <laughs> Please do. Please do. I just told my daughter that I have to go over there next year. That's my plan, but yeah, I want to spend 100%. a month. Yeah, 100%. You need to come back. Yep, yep. Okay, thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you.